Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use your Visual Studio code to query your PostgreSQL server. So let's get started. So first of all, open the extensions section in Visual Studio code and search for the extension called SQL tools. And the first result most probably which will appear here will be this one, which is for SQL tools. Now this extension works with many other SQL based database systems like MySQL, PostgreSQL, Microsoft SQL Server. So the full list of uh, supported database systems you will be able to see in the readme section of uh, this extension. So first of all click on install which is going to install this extension. Now once this extension is installed there is a new icon which will appear here on the left hand bar which is for SQL tools. So I'm going to click on this uh, icon here and let me close this uh, extension and then I can click on new connection to create a new connection. Now in order to connect to the PostgreSQL or any other database system, this SQL tool extension requires the desired driver extension for that database system. So in our case, we will be connecting the PostgreSQL, right? So we need the driver extension, which is for PostgreSQL. So once again, go to the extensions and then once again, search for SQL tools and under SQL tools, you will be able to see uh, more options which are related to SQL tools. So for example, SQL tool for uh, MySQL MariaDB, SQL tool for uh, SQLite, and we can also see the SQL tools for PostgreSQL, which is the required driver we need to connect to the SQL server. So just install this extension also. If you are using any other database, then you need to install the required driver for that database which is related to SQL tools. So once this uh, is installed, we can once again click on SQL tools option here. And now when I click on add new connection, I can see these two options. I will click on PostgreSQL here and then I need to provide the configuration of my PostgreSQL server so that I can connect to my Postgre. So here the connection name, you can uh, give any name here. I'm using the Postgre locally. So I'm going to just uh, name my connection as PG local here. And then you can also provide the connection group. I'm going to leave it as default. Now you can connect via the server and port socket file or connection string. I'm going to use the first option, which is server and the port and then you need to provide the server address. If you are running your PostgreSQL locally, just leave it as localhost. If you are running your PostgreSQL server on some remote machine, then provide the proper IP address of that machine. And then the port, the default port for connecting to the PostgreSQL server is 5432. If you are using some different port for your MySQL server, just provide that here. Now, in order to connect to your PostgreSQL server, you need to provide the name of the database which already pre-exist in your MySQL server. So let's say I have this database which is called demo, which I have already created in my MySQL server. So I need to provide the database name I want to connect to. So here you need to provide the username which you use to connect to your MySQL server. Generally, uh, if you have installed Postgre freshly, then the username will be Postgres. But it can be different also, which depends on the settings of your PostgreSQL server. Now here in the password section, you have few different options like uh, ask on connect, use empty password, and then you have save as plain text in settings. So I'm going to use the last option, which is going to save my password as the empty setting just for the simplicity but if you are concerned about the security then i will ask you to use uh, the first option or the second option here so i'm going to choose the last option which is save as plain text in settings 
because I have my Postgres server running on my local machine. So my password is really simple here. And then when I move down a little, it says node PG driver specific option. If you're using SSL, then you can uh, enable the SSL from here. Also, you will be able to see these multiple options like query timeout, statement timeout, connection timeout. If you want to give these uh, uh, settings, then you can uh, give all these settings from here. I'm going to leave everything as default. And then you have this connection timeout option. So I'm going to give this connection timeout as 30 here. And now I have given all the required configurations. So here I have the option to save my connection. But before that, we can also test our connection by clicking on the test connection button. So when I click on the test connection button, I can see successfully connected. That means my connection works. So I can click on save connection. Now, as you can see, the list of connection will be listed here and your configuration in the form of JSON is listed here. So you can see my password for my local Postgres root and uh, all the other configuration is listed here. Now, in order to connect to your Postgres server, you can just click on connect now or you can click on this icon here, which is for connect. You can also see the query history, which we are going to see a little bit later when we provide some queries here. So I'm going to click on this connect icon here, which is going to connect to my PostgreSQL database. And it's going to give me this kind of interface where I can run queries on my database. I can also expand this connection where I will be able to see my database, which is a demo. And then if I have some uh, tables, I will be able to see the list of tables here. So I already have one table here, which is uh, for the names. If I want to create new tables, I can provide the query to create those tables. So let's say I want to create a new table here in addition to the names table. So I can uh, provide this query, which is create table. If not exist, the table name will be users and it has three columns, ID, username and email. The ID is the primary key here. Now, in order to run this query, you can click on run on active connection. And once I uh, click on this, it's going to show me this kind of uh, tab here, which is for my query. And then when I refresh uh, this connection here, so I'm going to click on refresh here, then I can see my users table. And then I can also see that I have these three columns in my table, right? Now, if I want to see the content of this table, I can right click on this uh, table and then click on show table record. Right now, I don't have anything, so I can see the blank uh, table here. But once I have some data in this table, I will be able to see the records. So now let's insert some data into the table. So I'm going to provide this query for inserting the data into my Postgre table, which is insert into users, username, comma, email. And then I am going to add these three rows in my table. Now, if you want to uh, run a particular query and not the whole SQL script, then you can select your query here and then right click on your query. And then you have this option which says run selected query here. And it's going to run your selected query. And once that's successful, I can once again right click on the users table and then click on show table records. And now I can see three records here, which are added to my table, right? So this is uh, the SQL session, which you can save uh, for the later references also. You can see all the queries which are executed in the query history here. Now let's say I want to select the record via the query and not by right clicking on this table. I can do that also. So let's say I, when I type some query here, let's say SE, this extension is going to give me the options for the autocomplete. For example, select asterisk from users. And then I can once again select this and then right click and then click on run selected query. And it's going to show me the table records. 
Now, if you want to see details about your table or database, you can once again right click on your uh, table or the database and then you have the option to describe your table. It's going to describe what are the columns which are uh, available in your table and what are their data types and uh, other constraints about your columns. You can also add a new insert query. So just go to the end of your SQL script and then right click on your table and then you can click on generate insert query. It's going to give you the sample insert query for you. So as I mentioned, ID is not required in my table, which auto increments. So I'm going to remove that, but I can change the values for the username and email, right? So let's say a username, I'm going to leave it as uh, default and email. Let's say I'm going to say email at the rate gmail.com. And then I can once again execute this uh, query. You know the drill. And once I do that, the data is inserted and I can see the new data here like this, which is the fourth row. Now let's say you want to change the configuration of your SQL connection. Let's say your port has changed and you want to change the SQL connection. Just So just right click on your connection here and then click on edit connection and you will be able to edit your connection. You also have the option to delete your connection or you also have the option to disconnect from your current connection, right? So when I click on disconnect, it's disconnected and now I'm no longer connected to my PostgreSQL server, but the configuration is there. So let's say at the later point when you want this connection once again, click on connect and it will connect once again. This is how you can uh, use Visual Studio Code to connect to your PostgreSQL server then query your PostgreSQL server using Visual Studio Code. That's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video.